Thank you. Uh, Senator Vance? Thank you, Madam Chair, and thanks for all the witnesses for being here. I, I want to, before I get into my questions, just sort of you know, kick off by notice, noticing something about our country, which is that you know, it's extremely hard to be a parent and extremely hard to have families. I actually fear that we become an explicitly anti-family country in a lot of ways. Um, and you see this in, in multiple different phases. You see this in you know, the woman who is an hour from giving birth and chooses an out-of-network anesthesiologist and is then punished by, by this by getting $15,000 of unexpected bills. And when I think about this as, as a father after the baby comes, there's maybe no more miserable experience than flying with young children in this country. Um, and I, 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 I say that not to blame any of you or any of the groups that you represent, but to highlight just how difficult we have made it for young families to, to survive and to thrive in this country. And, and I, I, I want to sort of set that up by, by, by asking uh, Ms. Nelson a few questions about a policy change that's been advocated to, in my view, make it more miserable to fly with young infants, which would uh, basically make it impossible for lap infants, for parents to bring their babies and toddlers on the plane with them sitting in their laps. Um, that strikes me as another thing that's going to make life un unwelcome on airplanes for children. And I, I want to just start by asking, you know, we, we, I know this very personally. I, I've had very many babies, some screaming, some not screaming, on many flights in my life uh, with my kids, all of whom are under the age of six. Uh, for decades, parents have been flying with babies on their laps. They have been doing it um, in, in safety. Why are we proposing this change that would make it impossible for parents to fly with babies and toddlers on their laps now? Thank you for the question. Um, this is actually more than a 30-year priority for our union ever since the Sioux City crash of 1989 when one infant was killed and uh, the other three were injured. And the flight attendants were giving them instructions about how to uh, prepare for uh, to keep their child safe. And in our manuals was an instruction to wrap them in a blanket and hold them on the ground. Well. Um, there's no way to hang, even the most loving mother and father cannot hang on sure. to an infant in that situation. Um, so we have been proposing this ever since that time, that just like in our cars, we need to have a safe uh, seat for the infants to sit. What I would, what I would add to that, though, too, um, that has changed over that time uh, until now, is that it used to be, when I started flying, it used to be that the aircraft was half full. Uh, and there were plenty of seats, and people would bring their car seats, and they didn't pay for the ticket, but we would be able to find a seat for them, and it was the safest place for the infant to be. Um, on the FAA website, if you're looking for that instruction that is there, our concern is that by not selling those tickets, what the airlines are conveying to the families is that it's okay to bring your infant on board. And my concern is that as safety professionals on the plane, understanding that that is not safe for the infant, it's not safe in these severe turbulence incidents where the uh, children actually become projectiles, that we are not giving very clear instructions to parents about how to keep their children safe. And so I, I look at that from both perspectives, both in terms of protecting our, our smallest passengers, but also for flight attendants who are charged with the safety, health, and security of everyone on board. It's very concerning when we're giving instructions that are not as safe. I would only add that we don't have any temperature standards on board the aircraft. And so in a hot cabin, we actually had an infant that passed out, was on uh, his mother's lap, um, that may have contributed to it as well. And um, as parents are leaving the hospital, they are having to check out with the fire department or whoever um, about uh, installment of those car seats. It is so enforced from the moment that you leave the hospital, sure. but it is not enforced on our planes. And, and we are not giving that instruction to, to the families. And there's no place to go anymore because so, the planes are full. So, so I appreciate that, that response, Ms. Nelson. And, and the one thing I'd, I'd encourage your organization to do is maybe to think out how to, look, I, I don't think this is the right rule, but if you guys are gonna advocate for this rule, maybe to fit it in with some other changes that would make things easier on parents as you're, as you're advocating for that particular uh, approach. Because here, here's, here's the thing. I mean, the, the difference, of course, between an automobile leaving, um, leaving uh, the, the hospital and an airplane, there are two obvious ones that I can think of, right? One is that, look, if I take my kids from Cincinnati to visit their grandparents in San Diego, that's five hours. I mean, try to keep a toddler or a baby in a car seat for five hours. That is torture for everybody, including the baby and certainly the passengers around the baby. 
Um, but, but the second thing, of course, is that air traffic accidents are, thankfully, thank God, so much less frequent and less common than car accidents are. And so what, what I worry here is that in the, in the name of safety improvements, and I, I don't doubt that there are marginal safety improvements, we're actually proposing a change that would make things much, much more miserable for parents for very little marginal improvement in safety. And I, and I want to just, just one final comment here, and then, and then I'll shut up. Um, one thing that I really worry about, and I think both Democrats and Republicans should worry about, is we have some real demographic problems in our country. American families aren't having enough children. I think there's evidence that some of the things that we're doing to parents is driving down the number of children that American families are having. In particular, uh, there's evidence that the car seat rules that we've imposed, which of course I want kids to drive in car seats, have driven down the number of babies born in this country by over 100,000. So as we think about how to make kids safer, I think we should do it in a way that's, that is accommodating to American families. And I, I encourage your organization to do that. Thank you, I appreciate that. I just wanna clarify one point, and that is that the child would be required to stay in the seat for the critical phases of flight. So this is not keeping babies in a seat for five hours. Thank God. <laughs> okay, all right, thank you. Thank you, and I would have to say, um, if we really wanted to support families in this country, we would have universal childcare, we would have paid family leave, and we would certainly have 